Hello, this is Anne from the Burkle Farm talking about today another move across the farm. And later on, we'll get into how we have solved the water problem, at least for now. Uh, so we are getting ready here to move our flock. Uh, Peter there, he is taking down the line uh, so that we can use that to set it up for a new lane. Um, doing these moves, it requires a lot of preparation. <laughs> and um, this time we're making another nice wide lane because the animals, in their heads, they like wide open spaces. They do not like to be crunched in or they start to panic and bolt. <laughs> Ask me how I know. <laughs> anyway, here we go. He's opening up the gate and they run right through. They know we have got something good for them at the under, other end and boy, are they rewarded for it. As always, the cattle are slow to come, but these ladies are just ready to go. So, this move went pretty smoothly. Even the cattle eventually came uh, through and it was really without incident. It, I think they were kind of sick of that paddock that we had them in. Maybe it was a little more sparse, but um, either way, it went great. <laughs> there, it's, it's always kind of fun to just watch them go through and see which ones kind of leg behind these always leg behind. Peter always has to come up behind them, keep them going. They just don't have a lot of urgency about them. <laughs> but you can see that calf. Um, that calf was born in June and she looks really good. She, we think she's weaned. Um, and that's all off of grass, people. That is all off of grass from the pastures. And in the winter, we give hay when, you know, we just don't have anything growing anymore. Or the ground is just covered in snow. So it works out pretty well. And there Peter is shutting them back in. Um, he just does a simple tie. Um, there is a specific way he does it, and I don't quite know how to do it. I should, really should learn. <laughs> But next, he's he's talking about, okay, maybe we need to add another line of fence. Um, and so he, he gets after that pretty shortly here. We think we need to keep them out of the woods. Uh, further back in the woods, we do have more. But uh, this is their old paddock. I don't know why, but we're always fascinated by their poop. <laughs> the perfect temperature because I'm I have long underwear on and it feels really good. <laughs> <laughs> or you yeah. Well, cut out the part about long underwear. Yeah, I thought I'd throw that in there. It's kind of amusing. The um the thing about living in southern Minnesota is that it changes so quickly. Um there were several days in September when during the day we had the air conditioning running during the day at a you know a nice oh, what do we have it at 76 and then at night we would have to turn it up to 68 for the heat so having the air conditioning on during the day and then the heat at night because of the huge fluctuation uh, and so there peter was talking about he was glad he <laughs> had those long underwear on uh, sometimes it works out where that day is just so cold that, and you know, as I was filming this, I would, I had a hat on, I had gloves, I had my winter coat on. So yeah, there, there's that man in his, you know, his long t-shirt and jeans and he's fine, but he was very glad to have the, the long underwear on. But um, there he's setting up that extra fence. Uh, we have one further back in the woods. It would be towards your right more, but as we were looking at that paddock a bit more and what was all in those woods, we decided we didn't want them down in there. It, it would just be more to try to get them out later on. So 
that's why he's going to the hassle of setting up this extra uh, wire here. Uh, I think it was a good move. Um, it just made sense so that we don't have to go back into those woods to try to keep them out. And they weren't really missing any forage anyway. So I, they probably wouldn't even have gone back in there. But either way, now they're not going to go there on a wasted trip. Um, so yeah, it was a it was a good eventful, uh, non-eventful move for our flock and herd. Um, so next up, we're just gonna, you know, Peter and I are just gonna be talking through the rest of the move and um, how we do watering. That calf looks good though, man. We had one die old age and one die of worms that I bought I bought as a ewe lamb this year. And uh, even on this kind of pasturing system, she couldn't stay ahead of the curve and she died. And, you know, that's too bad. I, I wish I'd caught it because I could have doctored her and then sold her. But I, better than breeding that kind of genetics into our flock. Yeah. If you had known, you certainly wouldn't have kept her. No, I would have wormed her and then sold her. Yeah. There's people who are just totally cool with worming. Right. Yeah, well, yeah. and he, sometimes when you buy outside, yeah, and you don't know, like, I didn't buy it from the normal guy I've bought them from in the past, and I took a gamble on a somebody about 20 minutes away that I hadn't worked with before, and the sheep looked okay. The ram I bought from her was seems good, but uh, it is making me question that ram now. Yeah. We'll see. But you were, what was it, three good ones, one bad one? Yeah, yeah, so, like, um, this one right here came, these two right here came from her, and this one looks a little scruffy, but clean tail, like, you don't see mm -hmm. crap, you know, poop on the tail, which is a sign of worming issues, and she, you know, she's a little scruffy looking, which is okay, but, uh, this one looks really good. Which one? This girl? It's 36 right in front of us. Yeah. Really clean. Yeah. So. That's what I know. Maybe these... it's just a weak one that I got, and I picked wrong. Yeah. They're just it's clean. To, it's hard to know. But anyway, we'll just we're gonna be marching down this field, and then we'll come back this way. And you know, this field is this is our field that was in soybeans for at least thirty years, and you can just see the difference in quality. Yeah. And so this um, one was hay. Th this one's been in hay for a while, and you could and it got grazed an extra year because the first year we came here, this was dirt. Yeah. Pounded out dead dirt. Not soil. Let's see if I can get a picture of that in there. And so this is why we have all the hay bales everywhere is we're going to be adding carbon. You know, there's 45 hay bales out here, um, which is 45,000 pounds of carbon that will be feeding the animals and they'll be pooping out, trampling, mm. poop, you know, peeing, and uh, there's seed in there. So it's all good. That's right. So this is just a repair process. I know, I was listening to a Greg Judy video, and he said, you know, there's $30 a, a seed in every hay bale, mm. and I'm sure hoping that proves true for ours, because this field could use another seeding, and I yeah. don't feel like buying seed. How long has it been since they ate this pasture right here? 40 days, uh, hang on, maybe a little over 45 days, I can't remember, somewhere in there, 45 to 50 days. Yeah, it looks like there was plenty of growth. Yeah, it's not as much. Obviously, it's the end of the fall, and so regrowth is just not happening in the same way, mostly because we have half the sunlight we did in the middle of summer. Right. Um, even though it was warm early part of the fall, it doesn't matter when the sun's coming up an hour and a half early and going down an hour and a half early in Minnesota. So. Mm. It's just kind of, kind of like our chickens. It doesn't matter if they're in the greenhouse and it's warm. There's no sunlight, so they're just not laying the same right. way. Yeah. But... I think we're going to make it to December, barring any snowstorms that stop us from, the animals from getting down to it. Um, and then we'll come back to this, we call it the soybean field because it was in soybeans when we bought the farm. And uh, we'll start unrolling hay. Cool. And we'll see how it goes. All right. So I got to bring water out to them. Yeah. Interesting to talk about how you have watered the animals in the past, the present, and the future. 
Um, tell us what it was like when we first moved in before you had this this system. Uh, well, we moved in in October and right away we got six inches of snow so I didn't really plan anything so I got a bunch of five gallon buckets and a little hand cart and I was walking or pulling 20 gallons out at a time so maybe take me three or four trips and I got kind of sick of that but we did that for the first winter because um, we really didn't um the thing the spigots on oh thank you um, so then that spring I kind of thought about what I could do with a four-wheeler and I thought about like a water buggy and a pull behind the four-wheeler we had wasn't very good so I was concerned about like getting stuck all the time um, and I didn't really want to run my tractor all over the fields when I didn't need to even though it was a small tractor so th I bought one of these and this is like a RV gray water tank and then I just plumbed in uh, a vent this is like so, so air can vent out and then this just has a, a male connection on it and and then I have a female the female coupling that stays on the hose and this is just a piece of I think it's two inch PVC with a ball valve on it and I just use one of these flexible rubber uh, neck down couplers it's basically to give it some flex in case I bump something um, and then the only other thing I did was I took up some old angle iron and scabbed together, welded together like a little holder so I could keep it on the back of the four-wheeler rack a lot better using little U-bolts. Um, but, you know, this, this, this works right now for the block size we have. Um, meaning I fill this up once, I fill up their two stock tanks. This holds like 40 gallons um, of water and I find that those two cows, the, well the steer, the cow and her calf drink the majority of that water. The sheep don't seem to drink a lot of water at all. Um, because when I've had, had them separated for different reasons, the, the sheep I noticed maybe drank 15, 20 gallons total um, among all like 30 or 40 of them. Um, so then I just, um, but this isn't probably a future proof solution. This is like a nice remote solution um, what, I, what we need to do is take the time and put water lines out and we'd still need to figure out a winter solution because um, frost line here is five feet something like that it's a lot and I don't know that I want to pay someone to trench in water lines all over this farm for the cost of what that would be so um, we're still working at it uh, I guess if all the pastures were the way, way I would want them. I would dedicate this field behind the house as just kind of a sacrifice winter lot every year. And then I could have water at the top of the hill like we did last year. And um, and, and that would work out all right um, using like a frost tree hydrant and hose. I don't know. But you know, as we continue to expand, I, um, we're just going to have to figure out different things to do as we're on different farm sites in different locations. The, the, the winter in Minnesota is pretty unforgiving to different water solutions. So in the winter, what I will do is I will empty this tank out all the way and then drop it in our mudroom so that it's not frozen solid. And then I'll put it back on the four-wheeler, fill it up, take it out, water them, and uh, off we go. So it is a bit of a hassle, but, um, you know, we'll see. I don't know. What's your next question? Um, how did that with the hose? Um, and it when it is fro freezing outside, uh -huh. what do you do to still fill? Well, so we had a plumber come and replace this water bib with a frost free uh, siphon one. So, it, you know, the idea there is that the uh, when, it, when we're throwing water out in the winter, that it won't sit there and freeze in there and break the pipe it'll go back into the house and, and stay and stay unfrozen so yeah you know that might work we're gonna find out we just had it done oh the water's full yeah it oh there it goes so it sure would save a lot of time if you had 
lines yeah. running out well to eventually the farm. we need to put in a hydrant like an actual hydrant and put it eight foot down and yeah. tie it into the well and do all of that but it's just yeah. one of these things we're we're making do until it annoys us enough i guess <laughs> yeah to, to take this thing inside you know and make sure it doesn't freeze it's not a big deal it's just not ideal i don't know yeah i don't mind doing the work but well, as our flock goes up because we're you know next year we're planning yeah. to head towards 75 or 100 use this is probably not going to be a solution that makes sense in the long run right um for for where we're at right now which is a couple of cattle 30 40 use it's fine yeah it's, I mean, chores, including a daily move and, and filling this up, take me a half an hour every day. So anybody who says it's too much work is kind of kidding themselves relative to a full-time job. I do this on my lunch or in the evening after work. It doesn't take me about a minute. Cool. Yeah. All right. So that, that tank on the back of the four-wheeler, we'll fill these two up. Yeah. All right. Can you hold these or do you want to sheet together? Oh, wow. Yeah. I expect that if we didn't have cattle, we could probably get away with one of these 25, 27 gallon tubs a day with the amount of sheep we had, or two of them if we had double their use. Mm. Uh, so, Peter, how many of these have we had? Have we bought? Uh, this is my third one. Mostly because I do stupid things like try to squeeze the four-wheeler through somewhere I shouldn't and I snap something off. And it's plastic, so if you break the threads, that's kind of it. This, if this oh. bit breaks off... Yeah, it's kind of yeah. Or I left, I get in a hurry and I try to drive away with the hose still attached mm -hmm. and it pulls this out. Well, you can kind of get by... Well, no, you need to have the hose go Yeah, somewhere. I just put nylon tape on it to try to snug it up. And yeah. This is fine because this isn't something that needs to be watertight since it's on the top of it. But if this is broken, yeah. which is easy to break this because it's so well, far it's out. So it's rigid and it extends out about six inches from where you think. Yeah. Uh, one of those times I broke it. You're thirsty. Yeah. They don't like you. It. It's funny, they're used to the guard dogs yeah. when they're with them, but they can just kind of tell that she's like a hunting dog. Right. She's all pointy and her eyes are in the front. Ah. And they don't like that. Look this one sneak under. It's funny. Yeah, so for a flock this size, this watering system is cheap and it's reliable and it's fast and you don't need any really special equipment beyond like a means of transportation, so like a four-wheeler. Yeah. And it allows you to get to places where you don't have water necessarily. And then I don't, the other part of having water lines is I don't want to have to do a dance where I'm always making a lane back to a water spot or yeah. this I can just do it. Well, we did buy this new four-wheeler because of how important it is that we are able to transport water. That old four-wheeler just wasn't doing well in the cold. Well, it was 22 years old. That's a long life for a four-wheeler. Yeah. Um, I think this is probably the first new thing we've ever bought. But I yeah. just the amount that we use a four-wheeler, we use it. I mean, this year we got this in April. We ordered it in January, and then supply lines meant we got it in April. We've already put over 500 hours on this on this four-wheeler this year. Oh. We just use it more than anything else. Why did we buy new? Uh, Well, at least in Minnesota where we were, if I was looking, maybe thinking I'd buy a three to five-year-old Honda. And it was like, the used market was going insane this year. And so it was like, I could spend a thousand more dollars and get brand new. And it just made sense rather than taking something that I don't know how well it was taken care of. Right. So this is now our oldest sheep that we have since the oldest one, Pat, you know, died this year. And you can see she's not having a hard time. She is rotund. She's pretty fat. Well, she, uh, she only had one lamb this year because, well, she had two. 
but we had somebody from church that wanted bottle lamps to like do with their grandkids. Yeah. And so she only had to raise one. I peeled one of the males off right away. That's right. And they, so she didn't have kind of the pressure on her body that you know, the other had, gals. We did. had four sets of triplets this year, and <laughs> and then everybody else had twins. So. <laughs> I like this one. She's got a nice, like, she looks healthy. Her body is straight. She's a nice size. Where you know, is she I know, from? I know um, that's from John John's farm mm -hmm. um, out near New Ulm. That's right. Um, but I know, I know, um, I was talking to somebody who was reading and going through Greg Judy stuff and asked, we are, we have, I would say our flock is only got a quarter St. Croix in it. We're not as St. Croix heavy as Greg's farm is. Um, because the basis of our ewe flock has been a, a great Katahdin breeder, you know, nearby. And we, we like having that availability. Right. And it's then this is a, this is a white dorper and regular dorper cross. That's my daughter's uh, one of her bottle lambs this year. We didn't dock her tail. She no, was we We're not docked. a big fan of tail docking. I yeah. think it is a They docked her way too short. Well, it's, I think it's a disadvantage for being out in the winter. I mean, that's going to be tough. But yeah. Like, she's a healthy, healthy sheep, though. Yeah. She is. She is. So. She's grown a lot. Yeah. Well, we got her when she was... A week old? She's a little overly friendly. Uh, her and that brown one always get yeah, out of the fence she's been our fence buster this year because she doesn't seem to mind to take a shock to go to people or yeah. get at something she wants to eat and that's the difference between those bottle fed lambs and the yeah. these, these other lambs. well she didn't have a mother to learn from like yeah. most of our lambs have never tested the fence because they just can they're, they're picking up from other sheep behaviors this is not something to mess around with yeah and so i've i've not seen too many lambs born on our farm that have really messed around with this fence mm. which is i'm all right with it because i i i don't i don't know if i'd have the patience to be putting up two or three strands every day right the, one strand is good well in the summer when those those two bottle fed lambs kept getting out they were showing some of the other lambs. Yeah, we figured it out though. The bad way. Well, part of it too is they were they were young and they were really small. So a sheep will go try to go under a wire if they can think they can see a way underneath it. Mm. And so as these lambs have gotten bigger, they've gotten out less. And and I don't think we've had one out in maybe two or three months now. Yeah. So it's just it's part of having lambs on the farm or having calves. Calves are going to run through a fence from time to time. Lambs are gonna get out. Well, this new calf. Um, oh, she busted through the fence a bunch early on. Early on. Now she's no, she's so much better. I think, the, I think she's almost weaned or all the way weaned. Look know, how big the, she is by the mother. She's a chunk. Yeah, she's thick, and she's she was born in June, so she's only five months old. Wow. So I would I would guess I haven't seen her nurse on her mother in a, in a while. Not that. I'm always standing out here watching, mm. but um, I, I would hazard a guess that she's been weaned. Plus, mm. the, the the cow's bag looks deflated, like, you know, pre-pregnancy. Mm. Um, but we're going to have a new calf from her hopefully in May or June of next year. We, we artificially yeah, inseminated we her. her. And we just used uh, Easy Birthing Hereford from... Because we were kind of doing it last minute. Yeah. Um, and so I just used what the AI guy had. And I didn't want Angus because I don't really trust commercial Angus temperament. Yeah. So we found he had some small Hereford um, traits in, in some of his uh, samples or whatever you want to call them. The semen. So it's easy calving because, you know, she's a smaller cow. She's probably at maybe a thousand pounds. And she, her first, this calf was impregnated by Abe, who we sold. The Highland Bull, yeah. He was a Highland Bull. And we actually let him mate our neighbor's Holstein last uh, winter. 
Wasn't she a Holstein? She's uh, one of those composite dairies. Composite dairy. Yeah. And she was so much like taller than Holstein, him. Holstein, <laughs> Brown Swiss, and something else they said. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, he had to get up on a hill yeah. to, to get at her. <laughs> but it, it took, they did a pregnancy test like. No, they, I, they just, the calf was just born. Yeah, well, they did a pregnancy test like a few months later and. Yeah, he got her on the first he try. He got her on the first try and. Yeah, and that, now that um, baby, maybe I'll insert a picture, that calf looks like a highland. Well, it's pretty leggy and it's got a longer face, but it's really furry like a highland. It's yeah. a dark red highland color. Yeah. So, it was a boy though, right? No, it was, oh, a, it was a heifer calf. It'd be interesting to see how, how it milks and mm -hmm. how hardy it is to the colt. Well, that's why they wanted to use our bull, it's because mm. They wanted something with less milk than he, they were saying that their milk cow and she's old too she's yeah. like eight or nine which is old for a dairy mm -hmm. so they were trying to plan a replacement and they but they don't want seven or eight gallons of milk a day it's too much for that's a family a lot. yeah that's a lot. <laughs> so they're trying to draw down the milk and increase the beef characteristics and hardiness characteristics because it's just a homestead family cow for them they're not yeah. running a dairy or anything well, hon, let's uh, pull up this lane wire and get at her. I guess go do laundry. <laughs>